Mamy. To trzeba by było, kiedy um, What's the point of studying English? Um, I suppose because it's because it's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I mean that'd be. I mean that's that's why I want to study. I'm not really sure why why else you might you might study it. Really. What in it? What specifically in English literature interests you? Um, uh, I guess I guess novels. I always like novels. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy enjoy reading them. Um, uh, you know, like, um, I guess fiction has always been of interest to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I've never really like talked about it any more than that. Yeah. So you talk about fiction and about novels. Um, would you say that they're roughly the same thing? That novels and fiction could be kind of lumped together? Um, one. Um, I mean, no, novels, novels tend to be fiction. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, I guess that like, not, all, not all fiction is novels, necessarily. Have you ever read a, uh, a novel that's non-fiction or part of fiction? Let's break that down a bit. So, um, what makes, say, 
Shakespeare literature and Fifty Shades of Grey novel literature. Um, so I guess Shakespeare is like, it's, it's valued by like a sort of academic community. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a sense in which it's studied, in which like Fifty Shades of Grey wouldn't be. Um, you know, it's like a kind of um, uh, it's like a more it's a more difficult text as well as Shakespeare. Um, but I mean, they're both they're both like written written things that are kind of intended to be read. So it's hard to make a distinction. Before we go on, can I check that sentence? Saying that both of both Shakespeare and Fifty Shades are intended to be read. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you perhaps see a, a difficulty with that? A problem with that statement? Thinking about how Shakespeare was originally received. Well, I guess it's sort of to be performed. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you might say that they're like they're both meant to be consumed mm -hmm. uh, by a kind of an, an audience, um, but like that they're not. That might not be the same audience. You you've created a sort of um, uh, a valuable dichotomy, I think. You've talked about things being created to be consumed and things which are now studied, mm -hmm. um, and that there's something different between those, and there's a relationship that's sort of related to what literature might be between those two things. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if, if we, if we, uh, my colleagues and I spent a long time studying Fifty Shades, if it would become literature. Um, I don't think so. Um, you know, it just it wouldn't it wouldn't be like any different just because it had been studied. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, so I'm not really I'm not really sure what the difference is between the two. Um. Are you familiar with uh, with um, King Lear or Hamlet or Macbeth or any of Shakespeare's um, sort of tragedies? Um, yeah, I read, I read Macbeth at school. Mm -hmm. Could you um, could you tell me what you think makes Macbeth a tragedy? Um, well, Macbeth dies at the end. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that tends to be tends to be what happens in in the tragedies. Yeah, there's a lot of like there's a lot of murder, isn't it? It's not it's not very funny. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean I guess you could say it's like it's a, it's a sad play. Mm -hmm. If say we reimagined a, a, a recreation of Macbeth, um, mm -hmm. a liberal uh, direction with someone who was taking Macbeth but making some changes to it in his or her production, and at the end Macbeth wasn't killed but was say taken into slavery. Do you think the play would still be a tragedy? Well, I guess they always say that the, 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 the tragedy plays are the ones where someone dies. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean, Who's it? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I guess, how people have tended to categorise Shakespeare. So, like, the right. tragedy is the ones where people die. And Comedies the ones where people don't. Um, but, but maybe like that means something like being taken into slavery is sufficiently of a bad outcome from a death that kind of just good ass. Um, those, those categories, are, you know, the way that people in general have tended to divide Shakespeare's plays, are they worthwhile things or are they just convenient things? Um, I don't really know. I mean, it's useful to talk about. Um, so it helps you kind of, I guess, like just make it into like easy topics. Um, but I don't, I don't really know if it adds a lot to studying them. I'm not really sure what it, what it tells you about play, other than like the basis of what, what happens. Mm -hmm. So before you go to see the play, you've heard it's play, but then you have um, you have some sense of where it's going to end up, basically. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that? Changes the way that you see the play, and perhaps indeed you having studied Macbeth in a more absolute way, you having read Macbeth before, changes the way that you react to it when you go to see it. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes it makes it more interesting. Like mm-hmm. you, you go into it with like a bit more, a bit more knowledge of like the, the characters and of what, and what it's about. Um, so you might get a bit more, a bit more from it. Um, but I guess it's still like an entertainment piece. Like it's kind yeah. Of your reaction to it is still like, I imagine it's the same. More from it and not less from it. I think that's. Um, I'm interested. I'm interested by that. I wonder if um, if I'd say seen an episode of EastEnders and then watched it back again, if you think the same thing would be true, that I'd get more out of it the second time or not. And if not, why is that the case with Shakespeare and not with EastEnders? Um, I don't really know. I've never watched an episode of EastEnders more than once. Okay. Um, Neither have I. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I guess it's, uh, it would just depend on, on like, it would probably depend on the play. And it would probably depend on the episode of EastEnders, mm-hmm. and maybe even the person watching it. Um, but I don't know if it tells you anything about Shakespeare or EastEnders in general. Mm-hmm. So it's simply a case of specifics. Something is, say, dense enough that you can't get everything out of it the first time, so you need to go back on it. The same with an EastEnders episode or, or a Shakespeare play. Rather than there being a substantial difference between the two. Um, yeah, I guess so. And so, say you went, went back and you watched Macbeth three, four, five times. Mm-hmm. Do you think after a while you'd stop getting new things out of it? It would stop being a worthwhile exercise? Um, maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess there's only so much you can get out of it. Right. I wonder if we could bring this idea back a bit to what you want to get out of the course. Mm-hmm. Why you want to study English? So, if you think you know, you you've read Macbeth in school, and you think you might get more out of uh, going to see Macbeth because of that, mm-hmm. could you relate that to your intentions for studying English overall? Um, well, I guess I just you know I'd like I'd like to get more out of more out of the literature that I study, um, but I think mainly it's just it's just a subject that interests me. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd like to you know, spend, if I'm going to spend three years studying something, I'd like to spend studying English because that's what appeals to me mm-hmm. as a subject. I was, I was good at it at school, mm-hmm. so I think it would be like, a good, good thing to, um, to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and say English is not something quite, probably quite comparable, classics, MML, both literature but different languages. Well, I was never much good at languages, so I guess, I mean, I can see that there might be like a bit of overlap, but it's not really, like, for me, I suppose, because um, I've always like, read English literature, and that's kind of what, I don't know, that's what uh, holds my interest. Is it, is it problematic to say that you've, you've never been good at languages and yet you want to study English, or do you think English isn't really about language? Um, well, I guess I mean foreign languages. I mean, I suppose it's not, um, it's, it has, I mean, it is a language, so, I mean, studying, but it's, it's, it's more about the literature than the, the language itself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope that I already understand the language. Um, so you can access the literature? Yeah. Um, okay, we're almost out of time, um, but just as a final question, mm-hmm. what do you think um, a hairdresser would get out of an English degree? Um, well... I guess it's the same as what anyone else would, would get out of it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if they find it interesting, then they, they enjoy it and they'd get more out of reading. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't really, wouldn't really help them with being a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. Unless their clients like discussing the classics. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's quite a, an honest and democratic answer. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers. Um, how did you find that? Um, turning it on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite difficult. Um, I was fumbling for answers a lot. Yeah. Um, kind of sh- uh, struggled to deal with like things that I hadn't really studied before or like um, before, before. Which bits did you find uh, particularly difficult and which bits did you think went better? Um, I think it was a bit better when we were 
were discussing like specific bits of literature mm -hmm. and like harder when we were discussing more like conceptual things in general. Yeah. So that good, good tendency and something that's always um, legitimate to do is to take a question and apply it to a particular book. Mm -hmm. So if, if I say, um, what do you think literature is? And you mm -hmm. say, well, the thing that I you know, most feel is literature is Hamlet, for example, mm -hmm. and talk about that. That seems like a strange, a slightly invasive way to answer a question, but actually it gives you a bit more to work with in your answer. And I think it could end up being more persuasive overall than just saying on a conceptual level. Mm -hmm. um, that said, a couple of times when we did go into down, down into details and specifics, um, I got the impression that you named things that you'd read but weren't that confident about speaking about. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's sometimes quite hard to remember when you're in like, an interview situation. Yeah. Um, so my advice then uh, for preparation would be pick out a few things and, and really know them. So like, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you're giving an example, or give an example of a book you read the week before the interview. Yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of revision time is if it were an exam to revise anything, any books you've mentioned in your personal statement, any books you've mentioned in essays that you've handed in beforehand, yeah. that kind of thing. So you're already clued up and um, mm -hmm. I'd read up on, I'd read about the authors so you can talk about that. I mean, okay. you know, Wikipedia is a good start. Um, I'd read about the history of the creation of that particular text. Sometimes quite, it feels like it's a bit of a cheating way around, but actually it's a really good thing to do. It can be to pick out a few short poems by well-known authors, so pick out like a yeah. uh, poem by Wordsworth, say, um, mm -hmm. and really learn it. And because it's short, you can actually get a lot of information and detail about it, and it's quite easy to remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of body language, mm -hmm. did you pick up that when you got nervous, your body language changed? A little bit, yeah. I guess I like fidgeted more when I was nervous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it just changes your demeanour a bit, I guess, being nervous. Yeah. Which can make things a little bit difficult. I mean, yeah, I was nervous all day, I would be quite nervous. Yeah. Um, but I think it's remarkable um, how much you can trick people um, doing things like having your hands somewhere set where you can you know, keep check on them, they're not going to move them. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going to fidget, just having them sort of yeah. out of sight so you're not kind of distracting mm -hmm. the interview. And I think, oh, you know, you actually, the eye contact was, was fairly good. You don't need to yeah. stare at the interviewer's eyes. That's a bit strange. Yeah. But uh, making sure like you don't look sideways to the watch on the table mm -hmm. or the clock if there is one. Yeah. Uh, it's quite an easy thing to do, but it gives off a like kind of inherently very bad impression. Mm -hmm. um, great. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks.